ABBA has always been about their music, but also about their visual appearance. With a new Voyage project, they gave us an entire album with new music, and they also gave us an audiovisual experience with their Voyage show. This time, they are sending their own avatars. But it's not the first time that they are sending an image of themselves to visually represent ABBA. Today, we'll take a trip through the ages to explore ABBA's many shapes and forms, from comic strips to animation, puppets, and even a cartoon series that was cancelled. This is ABBA's universe. Hey, hey! So, in our journey today, we will see how the ABBA members were always very involved in creating many different alter egos of themselves over the years, figures and characters appearing as ABBA. One of the first illustrations of ABBA with now iconic status brings us to 1975. It was the time of glam rock and these are the glam monsters. The painting was given to ABBA as an award and they liked it so much that they chose it for the artwork of their next compilation album, Greatest Hits. The painting was created by Hans Arnold, a Swiss artist who lived and worked in Sweden and who created many illustrations for children's books, fairy tales and television animation. He is described as a Swedish Salvador Dali with hints of surrealism in his work. But now it gets interesting. Long before this painting, more precisely seven years earlier, Björn was already illustrated on one of his albums. He was celebrating five years of his first band, the Hootenanny Singers, and they released a new studio album with an illustration of the group. And you know who created this artwork? Hans Arnold. The back cover has early childhood photographs of the Hootenanny Singers, including Björn, and yes, it gives credit for the illustrated front artwork to Hans Arnold, long before ABBA was even born, but really just seven years away from ABBA's greatest hits. Think about that. And this painting, in a strange way, captures this period in ABBA's career when they were mixing a bit of glam rock into their early albums, and especially into their live concerts from the time, the staging and costumes. We did an entire episode on the creation and history of this artwork last year on Halloween. Very soon, ABBA would be painted again for one of their actual studio albums. But before that, it was time for ABBA's drawings to come to life. Time for an ABBA cartoon series. In 1976, work began on a cartoon series with ABBA's original music. It was planned as a series of 25-minute plot-driven films featuring different songs performed by their cartoon characters. Apparently, ABBA's cartoon versions were even meant to be voiced by ABBA themselves. Such is the rep rapport. This one. The series was produced by the Rec Grundy organization, who also did ABBA in Australia, the famous TV special, and ABBA's one and only feature film, ABBA the Movie. The show would have been very reminiscent of cartoon shows from the early 70s, like the Osmonds, the Jackson 5, or even further back to the Beatles from the 1960s. Our series was cancelled at an early stage and all that is left are performances of Money Money Money, which was actually broadcast back in 1977 on an Australian TV special called ABBA in the USA, and a fascinating rough version of Happy Hawaii, which was released 30 years later on the deluxe edition of ABBA's Arrival album. You can watch a standalone episode about this cancelled ABBA cartoon series here on the channel. In 1977, it was time for ABBA to be illustrated again, this time for their latest album. Their latest album is The Album. For ABBA The Album, a very special design was conceived. This time it would be more classic and timeless. It was not illustrated by Björn Julveus and not by Benny Anderson, but by an artist called Björn Anderson. That's right, and I could only find one more artwork that he created. In the same year, he took the photograph for an album of a Swedish jazz band. It's hard to find any other information about Björn Andersson, and not very much seems to be documented about the making of this iconic artwork for ABBA the Album. But the album also gives credit for Rune Söderqvist for illustration and design. He was ABBA's longtime collaborator, creating all of their album artworks from Arrival onwards, designing the sets for ABBA's final concert tour and inventing ABBA's famous logo. The artwork for ABBA the Album was also used for a notebook simply called ABBA the Folio 
and for the one and only feature film about the movie. In rare photos from original production meetings, it looks like the original title for the film was discussed as ABBA Moving and Catch ABBA. I think they went the perfect road with ABBA the movie, perfectly in line with the title of ABBA the album, matching the identical artworks. And once again, like the glam monsters on Greatest Hits, this artwork also captures the spirit of this period in ABBA's career, this time in an almost avant-garde style. The Australian vibes, moments from the actual film with the kangaroo, the airplane and taxi, and the chasing reporter, as well as the music itself, the opening and closing songs from the album, an eagle and a marionette. Even the strikingly white background and shapes remind me of the purity of ABBA and their white costumes on stage. In the film, the little shadowed puppets of ABBA actually come to life for a moment. Also in 1977, ABBA was back as cartoons. Not in a TV series, but as part of 21 episodes in an exclusive comic strip for the Swedish evening paper Expressen. ABBA Story tells the story of ABBA in comic strips. We see how Frida meets Benny, we witness Agneta's beginning and Björn and Benny's friendship, and of course, it also tells the story of ABBA's music and their first songs and hits, and even the incredible first meeting of Frida and her long-lost father. This comic strip series was written by Peter Himmelstrand and illustrated by Swedish comic artist Kjell Ekeberg. He actually received a phone call from Peter Himmelstrand if he would be interested in collaborating with him. Peter Himmelstrand, who wrote these comic stories, had been very involved with the other members. He actually wrote songs together with Björn and Benny and songs for Frida. And he was working as a journalist for the Swedish newspaper Expressen. The comic strips were also published in Dutch language in 1978 as part of a strip album. Today, the first page of this comic strip story is part of the Museum of Modern Art in Stockholm. Wouldn't it be nice if they would re-release this series and sell it at the Voyage store in London or at the ABBA Museum in Stockholm, so we could all enjoy it all over again, or for the very first time. And this was only the beginning of ABBA's comic universe. Look inside Look In every week for the exclusive picture strip story of ABBA, only in Look In. Look In also for the six million dollar man, the incredible bionic woman, and the tomorrow people. And Look In for a laugh with Benny Hill. Stewpot's up to the minute news desk plus fabulous color pop pinups. Look inside Look In every week and have a great time. Starting in March 1977 and running for one year until March 1978, the UK children's magazine Look In featured comic stories of ABBA in the magazine's famous picture strips. The cover of this magazine also featured paintings of artists and ABBA was frequently featured over the years. These paintings were done by Italian artist Arnaldo Puzzo, who also designed posters for movies in the 1960s. In 1978, the Swedish version of Mad magazine also featured a comic strip with ABBA in hilarious style. And finally, in 1980, the official ABBA magazine printed several parts of a comic strip called ABBA the Story. It seems to me that these were reprints of the comic strip from the Look In magazine, but I'm not quite sure about that. One of the pages was also printed in 1994 for the booklet of ABBA's box set, Thank You for the Music. The official ABBA magazine was issued between 1977 and 1981. In 1982, Frida was illustrated for her first English-language solo album, Something's Going On. This illustration was done by French artist Yves Pouget. Four years later, in 1986, ABBA's first live album was released. Once again, the artwork consisted of a drawing again conceived by Ruben Söderquist. I always loved the design of this massive stage construction, but I'm really mentioning this only for the sake of completeness. ABBA themselves are nowhere to be seen. And so, the decades went by, and lo and behold, ABBA was celebrating 30 years since winning the Eurovision Song Contest. The year was 2004. For that anniversary, there was to be an ABBA reunion, of sorts. They decided to create what was to be called the last video ever. No more cartoons, no comic books, it was time to bring out the puppets. Puppets from the Muppets, created by Jim Henson's Creature Shop. The video these caricatures of the other members tried to get a recording contract in Stockholm in 1974. 
like the old cartoon characters from that abandoned cartoon series, and like ABBA's avatars nowadays on stage, the ABBA dolls performed some of ABBA's original songs. There are cameo appearances from artists including Cher, who would later return to ABBA's story as part of the second Mamma Mia movie. Now, in hindsight, ABBA's last video ever is not really the last video ever, but strictly speaking, it is the last music video featuring the actual members of ABBA popping up in individual cameo appearances. A few years later, Agnetta returned with her 12th solo album, A, and for the final single, I Should Have Followed You Home, she appeared in an animated lyric video together with Gary Barlow. Around the same time, ABBA also returned as cartoon characters. This time, Björn himself tells the story in a brand new animated short film called Pop Story, which is exclusively shown at the cinema inside ABBA the museum. The story is based on Björn's actual book Pop Story, which features beautiful illustrations of the ABBA members created by Swedish cartoonist Ola Skogeng. His style is described as clear and simple with a muted color palette. Björn also wrote a book called The Little White Piano, again with cartoon drawings of ABBA and a heartwarming story of the power of ABBA's music. And that power has enriched all of these various configurations of ABBA themselves, their many shapes and forms throughout the decades. Today, they have finally arrived on a very special stage in London, in their very own arena, with ABBA's very own avatars, completely infused with life by the ABBA members themselves. ABBA is back, celebrated more than ever. On average, the show sells 98% of its capacity every single day. Wouldn't this be the best time to bring back all of these fascinating incarnations of ABBA that came to life over the years? The original comic strips, maybe even that original ABBA magazine with all of these vintage stories, news and insights from back in the day. But for now, we somehow brought it all back into one place with this video. ABBA's universe. I hope you enjoyed this trip through space and time. Let me know your highlights and all the memories you have. Alright? Until then, later!